Let's play with fire. I've got this Cody Spicer poster design I did the other day. Let's bring in our fire image. I got this from unsplash.com. I get a lot of my free stock images from that site. So once I have my fire image in, hopefully the fire image you're using is on a black background. And I can link this one as well in the video description if you wanna follow along to whatever design you're working on. The key is just using blend modes to find what's right for you in your design. Your best bet is gonna be something in this section here from lighten to lighter color. Screen is a classic that's gonna remove all of the black from the image and you can use things like color dodge to get a more harsh extreme effect, linear dodge. I would just play with these and, and see what works for the image that you have. We can start with screen. I'm just gonna drag this over here, maybe size it up a little bit more. And we'll just give him a little bit of fire in the foreground here. Let's also duplicate our fire layer, holding command and hitting J on our keyboard. And let's move it around. You know, if you wanted like continuous fire, the best thing you can do is, it's probably like vary the size and you might wanna vary the, the angle a little bit just by rotating it with your free transform shortcut is command T to transform anything in Photoshop. So I'm just moving this around here. Maybe we'll set this one to linear dodge and blow it up a little bit just to get some, some like subtle fire just on the edge the design here. It's really up to you. Add as much or as little fire as you want. Duplicate it, move it around, you know, shrink it, expand it, make the fire your own. I'm gonna switch this one back to screen maybe, fill in this gap here. And you might also play with the placement of the fire. Right now I'm just working on a flat background layer where I dragged in this poster design but maybe you wanted like the player in front of the fire and having some fire in front of him, some fire behind him. You definitely do that just by duplicating your fire layers and moving them wherever you see fit in the design. One other way you could use fire, you'll see how the fire that we have set with these blend modes, you can still see through it in parts that aren't totally white. So like we can still see his leg here. I, I like being able to see through it a little bit. I think that makes or maybe more realistic fire, but let's say you didn't. Let's say you wanted like a more opaque fire. One thing you could do, I'm just gonna duplicate this original fire layer we had and just bring it towards the middle. If you have the image just like this, you can go into this channels area and you can see it separates the RGB into a red, green, and blue channel. If you hold command and click, on any of these, it's gonna select only that color range from this image. So you can experiment, see what it's selecting. It seems to select the most of it when I do the red one, which makes sense because fire is mostly red. So now if we go back to our layers and then with our selection still active with all these marching ants, I'm gonna just click the mask button right here to add a layer mask. And now without even setting any blend modes, you have like the fire on a, a mostly transparent background. Although you can see the edges are a little harsh. You might have to go in with your black brush and brush away that. So obviously this is like a, a darker, a more darkly toned fire. I prefer the lighter one, but figured I would throw out that option as well.